Earlier on we had a look at steady pace cardio and how that can help towards your goals in improving lean muscle mass and burning body fat. I also mentioned HIT, high intensity interval training. And now we're going to have a closer look at how this can play into your training and help still build lean muscle mass and burn body fat. All you need to know about HIT is it lasts 20 minutes. Yes, it's hard, but for 20 minutes, you're really maximizing calorie burn and increasing your metabolic rate, which means how many calories your body is burning at any given time. Unlike steady pace, where you burn more calories over that cardio period, which is about 60 minutes if you remember doing those three 20 minute sessions. With cardio interval training, you may only be on the machine for 20 minutes, but you can spike your metabolism by up to 5% for an extra eight hours after you finish doing cardio. Now the people who may benefit most from doing HIIT training is if you really want to maximize how much body fat you're losing. And the reason for that is because of the amount of calories you burn throughout the day, you can really tap away at those stored energy in the body fat. If you're improving lean muscle mass, you may want to focus more on the steady pace cardio and perhaps only do HIIT training once a week or once every other week. Let's get down to what HIIT training actually involves. I'm using the rowing machine here because it's ideal for that kind of stop go, explosive energy without having to slow down. Unlike the treadmill, which you can do running outside, but if you're on a treadmill and you have to wait for the machine to slow down and then tap that increase in speed for it to build up, it's not quite as explosive as you can do on the rower. So here's what we do. We've got the machine set up just to a basic setting. I'll warm up for three minutes. At the end of that three minute, I want to make sure I have enough resistance on the machine. So out of 10, a level 7, 8 or 9 is perfectly fine. End of those three minutes, I'm going to go into all out effort for no more than 20 seconds. And the reason is I'm tapping into what's called the phosphate creatine system, which if you think of a runner, is the same kind of energy system that they use to do that 100 meter sprint. Any longer than that, I start to become too depleted and potentially become catabolic if I do this for a period of extended time. So 20 seconds of all out effort, followed by as long as it takes for recovery for you to feel your heart rate to come back down and to get your breath back enough to maintain conversation. I'll give you an example. Let's assume I'm at the end of my three minute workout now. I'm gonna take the effort level up. And then for 20 seconds. Close to and then allow a recovery time where I don't stop on the machine, I just slow down my reps or my revolutions until I feel my heart rate falling back down to a normal level. Now if you have a heart rate monitor on, keep an eye on your heart rate training zone. 65 to 70% is the lower limit you want to get down to before then going for your all out effort. Now the first few intervals you'll find your heart rate lowers down a lot quicker than it will later on. So you may find your recovery only lasts 40 seconds, 50 seconds, the first few intervals. From the third or fourth interval on, it may take two minutes, it may take longer. As long as it takes, allow your heart rate to fall back down to either a comfortable heartbeat where you can maintain conversation or at least 70% of your maximum heart rate before going for a further 20 seconds of all out effort. Ideally, you can build up to 10 intervals. What's great about something like interval training is you can really see an improvement in your recovery rate as you continue over the following weeks. So weeks two and three, whereas it may have taken you three minutes to recover on your sixth or seventh interval, you may find now it only takes a minute and a half. And that's a key sign that you're improving in both your respiratory and your training zone as well as burning some body fat. Okay, my recovery's come back down. 
Let's pick up the effort again. Taking my heart rate up now. My metabolism is going to be increased for anywhere up to eight hours throughout the day. I could be burning an extra 5% more calories each hour for the next eight hours. Anyway, you can perform this interval training on the upright bike, outside running, or the cross trainer. Just make sure you're comfortable with being able to deliver that all out effort for at least 20 seconds. I'm gonna catch my breath back and I'll see you over there to perform some abdominal exercises. Decline leg raises to focus on my lower abdominal region. If you remember before, we broke the abs into three main groups, and that was the lower, the upper region, and then the sides, or the obliques, which help rotate, accelerate, and de-accelerate the torso. Again, stick with our three points. I'm gonna focus on breathing, tempo, and repetition, and really contracting my abs at the peak. Let me show you. Now, decline leg raises is a fantastic exercise to work and develop the lower section of the abs. It's an exercise you probably see a lot of people doing, but not many people doing right. And it's so easy to get right if you just focus on the main points. And those points are, when you lay down on the bench, have your legs up straight. Now, the legs are purely there as added resistance. A lot of people actually push their legs up and think that's the movement. That's a great movement if you want to focus on your hip flexors and your lower back. Doesn't do much for the abs. So keep the legs fixed and focus on the hips flexing upwards and tucking them back in. So your legs really follow an arc and your knees come towards your chest. Watch again. This whole region, my legs and my hips, stays fixed. It's this movement again which is really what's engaging my lower abs. 20 to 30 repetitions on there, fully exhaling every time you lift your hips up off the bench and lower it down. And you don't want to fully rest your hips back on the bench. You want to keep tension in the abs throughout the full exercise. After this one, let's move on and focus on the obliques. Obliques, if you think about the job of obliques, what they really do is accelerate and allow de-acceleration of the torso rotating. Without the obliques, we just twist around and just keep going. So we're really training our obliques to be able to cope with that demand of the body rapidly rotating from side to side. And a great exercise to be able to focus on those particular muscles are the wood chops. Now, I'm sure you've all seen this exercise before where you stand there and hold the cable and go from side to side but again it's another exercise that when performed incorrectly really has very little effect on the muscle group that you're supposed to be working on so i'm going to break this one down and show you how you can do it to really isolate and maximize the obliques and get a great workout from this particular exercise first of all we don't need too much weight and as you can see i've extended the cable and the rope all the way out Now I'm starting with a light weight because again, it's all about the speed and tempo as opposed to how much weight I'm lifting. It's about the feeling in the muscle. As you can see, I've taken a normal rope pull down and just extended it, it's full length. And with my outer arm from the stack, overhand grip, and this hand I'm just gonna place on top. My whole upper torso stays fixed. My arm stays fixed. I'm not gonna bend the arms at all. And then just enabling the weights to go down and pulling it down close to that outer knee squeezing my abs
really allows me to focus and isolate on these obliques. So I perform on both sides. And if you really want to get a great workout in for the obliques, upper and lower, for the internal and external obliques, simply change the height of the pulley from high to low. So let me show you that one. Remember, one of the key factors about ab training is variation. So if you can make every ab exercise that you do each workout slightly different from the last time you did it, you'll soon start to see progression. So same grip, hand on top, and this time we're going up, kind of in line with that shoulder. See, I'm exploding up moving as quickly as I can. So again, that tempo, fast and explosive, but I'm controlling it back down. Breathing in, short breath out. So again, fully exhaling all of the air out from my lungs and squeezing my abs throughout the full range of motion. Like so many things in life, sometimes just the simplest things work the best. And that's true when performing crunches. Except on this, I'm performing on a decline bench so I get a longer range of motion to really stretch out my abs. So I'm locking my legs in. I'm going to lean back until I feel tension in my abs. So about there. Curling up, I'm going to have my hands just behind the temple and I'm not pushing my head forwards. They're just there to, again, add a little bit more resistance by bringing my upper arms out. So again, a focused range of motion. Unlike most that you see do this exercise, I'm not coming all the way down and up and really disengaging my abs when doing that. I'm keeping tension in the abs throughout that full range of motion. Although it's short, it's effective. A bit of touch training here. If you feel the muscles when you do this, they're being tensed from here. When you crunch them up and fully exhale, They've got that peak contraction. Just try not to bounce so you don't come up and go straight back down. Break down each repetition into its own rep. And as with all other exercises throughout this workout series, each repetition should be the same whether it's at the end or at the beginning. So there you have it. Four great exercises to develop and tone and help you get rock hard abs in your lower, upper and side obliques. Anyway, that's the end of cardio and workout session today. I'll see you back in the gym for the next workout.